Hello everyone. Today we're going to have the properties of isosceles trapezoid. So isosceles trapezoid is the trapezoid with both legs. So these are the parts, by the way, of an, of an isosceles trapezoid. First, we have the legs and then um, there, are base there are base angles and these are other sides are base. So the ones that are parallel to each other are called the bases, base and the base. And then the ones that are not parallel are the legs. And then on the corner where the bases are, we call the, we call these as the uh, base angles, and these two are also base angles as well. So let's have the properties of um, an isosceles trapezoid. Let's take the first one here. So the first property states that the base angles are congruent and the two legs are um, congruent. The total interior angles of a trapezoid or a, a um, isosceles trapezoid is 360. So let's take the first example here. So if I have here uh, 109, this other side right here, since they are, since it says here that the base angles are congruent, so this other angle that we have here is also 109. And then if this side is 32, the other side is also 32 because the two legs are congruent. So this is a leg and this is a leg. So this is 32 right here. Okay, now next we have um, the, the last statement that we have here states that the total interior angle of a trapezoid is 360. So this means that the whole thing should be 360. These two are equal, these two are equal. So then we can um, set up our equation here. So we start with angle X, so that would be angle X plus angle W. So angle X, angle W plus angle Y plus angle T is equal to 360. So all of these angles are equal to 360. Now let's put in values. And then just a reminder, again, angle Y and angle T are congruent. So angle X, we have 109, plus angle W is 109, plus angle Y and angle T are equal. So I can go ahead and name both of them as angle Y plus angle Y. The reason why I have to put a both angle Y here because we have two angles that are, uh, if there are two variables here, then that means that Y and T, uh, 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 if we don't put them together as one variable, then it would be difficult for us to solve an equation with two variables. So we have equal to 360 for this. So adding 109 and 109 is 218 plus 2 angle Y equals 360. So then we are going to subtract 218 from both sides minus 218. So then we are left with 2 angle Y equals 360 minus 218 is 142. And then we divide both sides by 2 here, divide this by 2. So then our angle Y is one, I mean 71, 142 divided by 2 is 71. And this is equal to angle T. So angle T would also be 71 degrees. So both of them are equal each other. So then I can go ahead and write this is 71 degrees and this is 71 degrees. And so our angle Y is 71. Our angle W is 109 degrees. Our angle T is 71 degrees and XY is 32. At this time, I would encourage you to pause this video and try this problem out on your own. And when you're done, and pause it and check your answer. Okay, so we go over this. We solve for the Y first. So it's pretty much the same thing as this. These two sides are um, congruent, so we can equal them to each other. So we'll solve for Y first. So that would be 4 y minus 7 equals y plus 8. So then I am going to subtract y from both sides minus y. So I am left with 3y minus 7 equals 8. And so plus 7 from both sides, plus 7 and plus 7. So I am left with 3y equals 15. And so I divide 3 from both sides, divided by 3, divided by 3. So then the y is 5. So I can go ahead and write y over here. 
y15 divided by 3 is 5. So y is 5 right here. So if y is 5, I plug it in. So 4 times 5 minus 7. So 4 times 5 is 20. 20 minus 7 is 13. So this side length right here is 13. That is CD is 13. And then I plug in the 5 again to this expression right here. So that would be 5 plus 8 is also 13. That makes sense because these two sides should be congruent. So then EF is also 13. And so we're now ready to solve for X. This angle right here has, um, has an expression that contains the X. So that would be... Um, since these two are base angles and base angles for a trapezoid are congruent, so we equal them to each other. So this would be 3x minus 10 equals x plus 30. So then we subtract x from both sides minus x here. So we are left with 2x minus 10 equals 30. And then we add 10 from both sides plus 10 and plus 10. So we have um, 2x equals 40 divided by 2, divide this by 2, and divide this by 2. So that gives us x is equal to 20. So our x is 20, so I can put in um, 20 over here. And then we can solve for angle C by plugging in 20 to the x here. So 20 plus 30 is 50. So this angle right there is 50 degrees, angle C. And then angle D would be, again, x is 20, so 3 times 20 is 60. 60 minus 10 is 50. So that's 50 degrees. So I write 50 over here. Now we are ready to solve for DE. To solve for DE, it's going to be similar to this. Since D, angle D and angle E are congruent to each other since they are base angles. So then we can set up our equation that would be angle um, C plus angle F plus angle D plus angle E equals 360. So all of these are equal. Now we have angle C and angle F are 50. So that is 50 plus 50 plus angle D and E are equal, so I can go ahead and say angle D plus angle D equals 360. So this would be 100 plus 2 angle D equals 360, and then we subtract 100 from both sides, so minus 100 minus 100. So again, it's pretty similar to how I did it over here. So this would come out to be 2 angle D equals 260, but this is 100, so minus 100. So that is 260. So divide both sides by 2, divide this by 2. So that gives us angle D is equal to 130 degrees. And remember, angle D is equal to angle E, so angle E is also 130 degrees. So in here, I can write 130 for angle E. And 130 for angle. Uh, so let me just change this to angle F. So let's just change this to angle F. And this is angle E and angle D. So let me just change this so we can fix this part over here. So angle C and F are 50. And angle E and D are 130. So this is 130 degrees and this is 130 degrees. So if you add uh, 130, 130, 50, and 50 would be 360. Now let's move on to the third property or the second property. That was the first one. The second property of a, a um, isosceles trapezoid. So the two pairs of consecutive angles not from the same base are supplementary. And then... Um, opposite angles are supplementary. So let's explain this uh, property here. So we start with the first one. So um, this angle is 100. So our x, these two are, by the way, these two are equal to each other since these two are base angles. Again, base angles in the first property are equal to each other. So this one right here is 100 degrees. So both are equal. So these two are also equal since they are base angles. 
and then since these two are um, congruent to each other, and it's an isosceles trapezoid. So this uh, this property here tells us that angles that are next to each other and not the base angle, which which is on the other base, are supplementary. So then we go ahead to solve for x. That would be angle B plus angle A is equal to 180. So these two have to be equal to 180 since they are supplementary and they are two consecutive angles that are not from the same base. So angle B is 100 plus angle A was represented as X is equal to 180. So then I subtract 100 from both sides minus 100. So then we are left with X is equal to 80. So this angle right here is 80 degrees. And so this other angle right here would also be 80 degrees since they are base angles. So we're ready to put in the values here. So our X is 80. Our angle A is 80. Our angle C is 100. Our angle D is 80. At this time, I would encourage you to pause this video and try this problem out on your own. And when you're done, and pause it and check your answer. Okay, so we go over the problem here. Another property, uh, another statement for the second property is that opposite angles are supplementary. So these two are supplementary angles. So then if they are supplementary, their total should be 180. So I can go ahead and um, set up the equation as 5x plus 20 plus 4x minus 20 equals 180. Again, these two angles are supplementary. It's the same thing as this. These two are supplementary. That means their sum is 180. So since these two are opposite angles, not from the same base, should be 180. So we can cross out the, uh, we combine like terms. So that is um, 5x plus 4x is 9x. And then if we add 20 and negative 20 is 0, so we're left with 9x equals 180. So then, um, so that's equal to 180. So then we divide both sides by 9. Divide this by 9. So we are left with x is equal to 20. So our x right here would be um, 20. And then our y, angle y, we plug it in. So 20 times um, four, 4 is... So 20 times 4 is 80, 80 minus 20 is 60. So this corner right here would be 60 degrees. So angle Y is 60. And then this side right here, angle T, since there are base angles, this should also be 60 degrees. So angle T is 60. And then angle W, so we plug in the 20, so 5 times 20 is 100, 100 plus uh, 20 is 120. So this corner right here is 120, so angle W is 120, and since there are base angles, this is also 120, so that's 120. So then if you add 60, 60, 120, 120, should be 360. Did you get the same answers as this? Good. Perfect. Now let's move on to the third property that's going to talk about the diagonals of a uh, an isosceles trapezoid. So the diagonals are congruent. So if JL is 17, that means our, so the JL is the diagonal, the KM is also 17. So it's pretty straightforward. At this time, I would encourage you to pause this video and try this problem out on your own. And when you're done, and pause it and check your answer. Okay, so we go over this. Since um, DF is 10x minus 15, that's the diagonal, and GE is x plus 12, and that's the other diagonal, then the diagonals are congruent, so we can equal them to each other. So that would be 10x minus 15 is equal to x plus 12. So we're going to subtract x from both sides, minus x here. So we are left with... 9x minus 15 equals 12. 
So we add 15 from both sides plus 15. So we have um, 9x equals 27. Divide both sides by 9. Divide this by 9. So our x is 3. Okay. So once we have the x is 3, we can plug it in here. So that would be, uh, so our x here is 3. So to find df, we plug it in. 10 times 3 is 30. 30 minus 15 is 15 is the df. Since they are congruent, we're expecting the GE to be 15, but we need to plug it in. So 3 plus 12 is 15. And so both diagonals, DF and GE, are congruent at a measure of 15 when the X is 3. Did you get the same answers as this? Good. Perfect. If you find this video helpful, hit like and subscribe for more math videos. See ya!